Oh, Oregon Ducks. They head out to the big house to face big, bad, vaunted Michigan and 100,000 people. Now, Oregon is favored in this game by 14 and a half points. This one is supposed to be a doozy. Now, there are two schools of thought, right? There are a bunch of people that think that Oregon is going to absolutely roll in this game and not giving Michigan a shot. And then there's the people that are like, yo, yo, this Oregon team, this is fool's gold. This team is not physical. This team is a finesse team, and they're just out there doing their thing. And I'm like, have you watched the Ducks play? Have you watched the level of physicality? There's a term that I like to use when I say a team looks good getting off the bus. Now, Oregon previously, when they went to the national championship in 2014 and 2010, yes, they had some dudes, right? But there is a difference when this team gets off the bus. Their defensive ends look like D tackles. The linebackers look like D ends. And the corners look like safety. Safeties look like small linebackers. This is the way the team is set up. And this is the way elite teams look when they get off the bus. Now let's analyze this game though, because obviously this game is much bigger for Oregon than it is for Michigan. Because Michigan is a team that it, it that everybody knows that's watching. They've had quarterback trouble. They've lost three games already. They've got a new head coach in Sharon Moore. Jim Harbaugh's gone. Connor Stallions is gone. All sorts of stuff is gone. So this is a whole different football team than won the national championship last year. Now this week, Michigan got some news. Their quarterback who has played some this year, Jack Tuttle, he's now retired. He has cited injuries and he's like, I'm not going to be able to come back. So now the Wolverines, they've seemed to move to a two quarterback system where Alex Orgy, he runs the ball, doesn't throw the ball. And Davis Warren, former walk on, he's the one who throws it. Now, it sounds like Michigan is going to get the benefit of Khalil Mullings, their star running back, their best running back right now, who's playing better than Donovan Edwards. He'll be in the backfield this week, despite video evidence showing that he stomped people in a scrum after the win over the Michigan State Spartans. Now, it was clear as day when you see it that something happened and Michigan State is upset because they wanted the same treatment that their players got two years ago when they got in the fight. Now, I do believe that tempers will flare a little bit because Michigan players are not going to want to come around and get pushed around by the by those soft West Coast teams. Well, Oregon's a very prideful team. So watch that locker room thing flare up again. Not maybe in the same way, but there will be a little bit of jawing and a little bit of talking. I'm telling you that right now. And you got uh, Derek Harmon former Michigan State uh, defensive lineman who's over at Oregon as well. So there's going to be some jaw in there because they played many a times. Now, on a side note, Michigan does need to fix this tunnel situation. I know that they have an old stadium, but they got to figure it out because there have been too many incidents over the years, and one of these times, somebody is going to get hurt. Now, Sharon Moore, he said that Mullings, that he was just trying to be a superhero and break things up. What? That ain't what happened on film. And he's going to have to be a literal superhero, though, against the Ducks if they want to win. Because this game is going to be on his shoulders and that offensive line shoulders. And the best shot that the Wolverines have is to keep the ball away from Oregon's offense, which is ninth in yards per game, sixth in yards per play, and 13th in points per play, and ninth in average margin of victory on the season in the nation. So that lets you know that you want to sustain drives if you are Michigan. Drive up and down the field. Keep the ball out of Oregon's hands. Hopefully force a turnover or two and then get some three and outs. Tackle well. That's their keys to victory. This Oregon offense is serious business. Very serious business. But if Michigan is going to have a shot, it's going to be because Oregon's quarterback, Dylan Gabriel, literally gives the Wolverines extra offensive opportunities. It means he's missing throws throwing a pick, fumbling, something like that. And as efficient as Gabriel has been this year, completing 76% of his passes, he has thrown five picks. And that's equal to what Oregon had as a team in 14 games in 2023. Now, two of them came in one game, and they were kind of nasty against the Michigan State in the red zone. And he threw a pick in the red zone against UCLA. But it seems like since then, clean those things up that those were aberrations as opposed to something that you have to be worried about with him. 
And this Michigan team is not a team that you want to give extra possessions to because they will hold the ball because they are three cloud, uh, three yards, four yards, and a cloud of dust. And it's not like Oregon's run defense has been impenetrable. They've given up almost 500 yards rushing over the last three weeks combined in Big Ten games. Now, they have been able to get stops when it mattered the most, but they did give up some gashes to Michigan State, and they did give up a couple of gashes to Ohio State as well. Just the truth. And against per Purdue, they were I mean, they were essentially running the triple option, but still. But I will be taking Oregon to cover this 14 and a half on the road here because it is simple. Absolutely nobody that they have played has shown an ability to slow this offense down. And I do not think it starts this week. I believe that this will be a continuation of a roll. This will probably be a three score game. The Oregon defense will show up and force Michigan to pass the ball. Because if you force Michigan to throw the ball 30 plus times in a game, you will absolutely win that football game.